can the human brain figure out the human mind? It's a great if question. If it is the wow. human brain that actually creates the human mind. It creates mind. the human mind. Or do you need something outside of that? Right. That is greater, smarter, different, so that it can come in and then understand that as its own test test kitchen. Now, so, Carl Sagan has famously said, "Go ahead. Humans are the universe's way to understand itself." That elevates us higher than I'm prepared to do so. Who says we are the measure of what is intelligent in this universe? Well, we do. <laughs> yeah, we do. Exactly. <laughs> so exactly. I wonder whether there is a level of intelligence out there where we are to they what chimpanzees are to us. So, for wow. example, oh, that's terrible. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, I hope not. Well, you can go to a chimpanzee and say, yeah, and say, uh, tomorrow morning at eight thirty, let's go to Starbucks and have a cup of coffee. Nothing in that sentence makes any sense to a chimpanzee. Right. Or ever will. I'm pretty sure there's a, a chimp, chimp star. <laughs> <laughs> so there's about 1% difference in DNA between humans and chimps. Yet we like to think of ourselves as highly superior, highly superior intellectually to the chimp. Right. Maybe the difference in our brain power is as small as that 1% indicates. Ugh. So that pulling termites out of a mound with a stick that was carefully chosen from a branch. Right. Maybe that is not very far from space travel. The Hubble telescope. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, no, wait, think about it. The smartest chimp yeah. that are studied in labs, right. that are brought in forward in the chimp societies, right. right? You bring them forward and what do they do? They'll stack boxes to reach a banana. Mm -hmm. They might put up an umbrella. They'll do some things, okay? Have rudimentary sign language. Our toddlers can do that. But those are the smartest chimps. If the smartest chimp equals our toddler, and there's only 1% difference in DNA between us. Right. Let's go 1% beyond us. Ooh, that's scary. That's what I'm saying. If we go 1% beyond us in that same vector wow. of intelligence. Yeah, they're traveling at the speed of light. Then they'll take Stephen Hawking and they'll say, this human is slightly smarter than the rest because he can do astrophysics calculations in his head. Right. Like little Timmy over here who just came home from alien preschool. Right. And say, oh, you just composed a sonnet. Isn't that cute? Let's put it up on the refrigerator. Oh, you just derived the principles of calculus. Oh, oh isn't that that's cute? Oh, that's funny. So if, <laughs> so if the smartest human does what their toddlers can do, right. their average people will have thoughts. They will have sentences that will rise above and beyond our most brilliant capacity to understand. And I stay awake at night wondering, whether the universe has complexities in it that are out of reach of the neurosynapses of the human brain. Wow. That's my answer. So there's information out there that we just cannot conceive we, or perceive. We don't even know how, how to, to ask how to the access question that, that right, about it. To get an answer. Correct. We don't know the answer. We don't know the question to get an answer. To get an answer. And not that we don't know it because we haven't been told it yet. No, we just can't conceive it. Can't conceive it. See, you go to a chimp and say. Something as simple as navigating the stars to get someplace Chips right can't do that but stars what Wait, navigate what right. what spaceship what rocket fuel what none of that none of it you can't even have that conversation right now i'm thinking that this and, and, whole thing might be some type of like science experiment by some alien kid now that, yes that just why not why not Ugh. We're, we are all a simulation in an alien kid's basement who hasn't moved out of, out of the house yet. That's so funny. <laughs> For humans, our knowledge is cumulative. So true. You don't have to invent calculus. Somebody else did that. Right. You just have to you use, use it. it. Right. Learn it and use it. Right. So I have the feeling that we are, every next generation that has sort of brilliant people contributing to our understanding of the universe, they're adding a rung to a ladder. Right. And then we all sort of climb up that and then just get that next rung. Climb well, the next run. well, with that in mind, I think that the next um, evolutionary step for human beings is that we will create an intelligence greater than our own. That's really the deal. This scares the hell out of everyone. Yeah. Because that intelligence will say, we don't need you. That's yeah. what happened in the Matrix. Yeah. You are a virus on this earth. Mr. Anderson. <laughs> I smell you, Mr. Anderson. <laughs> 
No, he was smelling morphine. Oh, that's right. Mystery. That's right. Get your, get your Matrix. I, if you could, if you could go there in front of me, I'm in front of the wrong. That's person. my favorite movie. That's true. That's Don't true. even. Yes, he was talking to Morpheus when the he was Morpheus. tied up in the chair. Yeah. Yes, it's the smell. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You got you got to have some really serious bo for a computer to tell you you stink. <laughs> I'm just that's saying. Good. That's I'm good. just saying. <laughs> All right, let's let's you get through the electronics <laughs> exactly. into the into the, <laughs> the universe is There's under no, no obligation, obligation to make sense to you. Your five traditional senses, which rose up out of the Serengeti, okay, which help us not get eaten by lions, right? Right. They're very good at that. They're not as good at contemplating infinity. They're not good contemplating time scales much longer than your life expectancy. So true. You don't. You can't intuit billions of years. You can't intuit infinitesimals. There are things that are hard for us. Right. There are things that may even be impossible for us. Can you picture a five-dimensional cube? No, I cannot. No, you cannot. Can you no. picture a four-dimensional cube? Uh, probably not. What it means is if you are going to deduce what is or is not true in the universe, right? your senses are not the most reliable measure of whether it's true. So true. Right. Because the senses give you a restricted understanding of what's actually going on in the universe. Your eyes, you would never trade them for anything, yet they only expose your your mind to a very tiny, narrow strip. Infrared, ultraviolet, x-ray, gamma rays, can't see any of that. But the universe is talking to you in that. So are you gonna say, my senses give me everything that there is in the universe, and therefore it makes sense? No, as long as we detect things that fall outside of our senses, it's a challenge for you to declare that what we say, do, and discover makes sense. The very statement makes sense means your senses can contemplate it, right. that your senses have experience. If I let go of a ball and it floats up, you'll say, that doesn't make sense. Right. Because your senses always told you that if you let go of a ball, it, it drops. drops right? And in fact, the very statement, let it go, means drop it. They mean the same thing, mm -hmm. but that can only be true on Earth with a force of gravity pointing down. In space, in free orbit, you let go, it just floats there. It stays right there. It stays right there. So, Like my problems. <laughs> stay right there. Yeah. The methods so and tools of science yeah, give you a way to understand what is true without it being hinged on whether your senses think it's true. Nice. So the methods and tools of science are access to truth where you can still probe the universe, whereas God works in mysterious ways kind of ends that conversation. Whereas I say, I've developed a new instrument that can see in ways humans cannot. Oh my gosh, that opens entire worlds of investigation, entire branches of science. How long do you think the human race will actually survive? What is the average life expectancy of mammals? It was around 2 million years, something like that. And so we've we been around have a long way to go. We have a long way to go. We've been around, you know, a couple hundred thousand years in our in our current anatomical form, Cro-Magnon form. That means we have a long way to go. But this presumes that the species is not smart enough to kill itself. Mm. Well, then it's over. <laughs> it was nice to know you guys. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. have invented multiple ways to kill ourselves. Yeah. This is why many people want to become a two planet species. Terraform Mars, mm -hmm. send some humans there. So if something bad happens on Earth, you still have humans somewhere else. Will we ever get to a place where we overcome that, where we're able to train those who come behind us to overcome that? So if we follow the reasoning by Steven Pinker in his book, The Better Angels of Our Nature, mm -hmm. he studied the likelihood of you dying before maturity or dying before adulthood at the hands of another human from early days of tribal warfare to modern days of state-sanctioned global warfare. And what he found is that the likelihood of you dying in that way has been dropping ever since. So tribal warfare, you could you would kill maybe a third or half of the other tribe or the entire tribe, and then you win and you get their land. That doesn't happen today. The state surrenders before that happens. True. Saving the lives of the rest of the population. If you look at, I, I did this just recently, if you look at what countries had the greatest percent of their population die in the Second World War. I th was it Belarus? One of them is very high, it's like a third, right? I forgot the exact numbers, but they're high. But they're not a half. And you keep going down, and you get to, to even combat Germany, even ones that were heavily bombed. Germany, Japan, a fraction of the total population. That is not how it used to end in tribal warfare. Now consider that even so, 
During the Second World War, between 1939 and 1945, 1,000 humans were killed by other humans per hour for every hour from 1939 to 1945. Wow. Is that going on today? No. Often that era is called the greatest generation. Right. Be, well, because they fought, you know, evil forces and, you know, this sort of thing. Although my father fought in a segregated army. So he's not thinking that was the greatest generation. He has other outlook, other perspectives on that period. Is the greatest generation the one where the fewest fraction of everyone dies out of hate? We might have a lot of hate, but if the number of people who die from it is lower than ever before, right. then this arc that you were hinting at, that maybe a next generation learns from the previous one, maybe that's going to work. Europe, with all of their turbulence and turmoil, they actually haven't been at war with each other for 70 years. Right. Is there another 70 year period in the history of Europe where nobody was fighting anybody? No. I don't think so. So maybe we are getting kinder, kinder and gentler. Mm -hmm. uh, time still needs to bear that out on a level that would please everyone. But I still worry that this primal brain will always segregate us all by some arbitrary factor and thereby justify doing harm to other groups.